Okay, so I'll start with the more. So um, my name is Shai Moran. I'm, I arrived here 10 days ago. Before that, I, I spent a wonderful year in California, in Berkeley and in uh, UCSD, hosted by Shahar Lovett. And before that, I finished my PhD at the Technion in uh, Haifa with uh, Amir Yudayov and Amir Spilka. And uh, yeah, my interests are in general, I, I love mathematics, uh, mostly combinatorics, geometry, and uh, its connections with computer science. In my PhD, I focused mostly on uh, machine learning and uh, its links with other fields. And today I will present a problem that is not uh, exactly my main focus, but I think it may be of uh, more interest for this audience. So yeah, let's begin. So it's based on oh, something here is weird with the, with the slide, OK. So it's based on joint work from Miri Udayov. Um, and it's about weak epsilon nets versus the Radon number. So let me begin with tell you about an amazing theorem from 25 years ago. It's accumulated work about convex sets in, in Euclidean spaces. So it turns out that for every distribution <coughs> on RD and for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a small set N, an epsilon net, with a set of points N with the following properties. It will hit, it will intersect every convex set whose measure, according to mu, is at least epsilon. And it is rather small. So in particular, the upper bound we have does not depend on the distribution mu. It depends only on epsilon and the dimension of the space. OK, and we will s soon see an example to digest it. So such a set N is called a weak epsilon net with respect to mu. And as I said, uh, the amazing fact is that the bound does not depend on mu. And it was used also <coughs> to in the Lorentz Kleitman's proof for the PQ conjecture. I will not tell you about it, but it was um, a long-standing open problem. And by the way, it is still open. We still don't know what is the right dependence here. So, and in particular, the best lower bounds we have are <coughs> roughly linear on d over epsilon. So there is a huge gap to close. And some people conjecture that the right bound should be linear. But that's not what I'm going to focus on. So let's see an example in the plane. So assume that we have a, a discrete distribution. So we have some m points in the plane. And, there is, and we consider the uniform distribution over these points. And let's assume that the epsilon is such that epsilon times m equals 6. So, we, so the goal is to construct a small set of points that hits every convex hull of at least six blue points. So. As far as I checked, these uh, set of red points satisfy it. And we can see that, for instance, here we have a convex hull of six points. And it contain one, contains one red point. And you can also take this one, or this one, or this one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so anybody sees a counterexample? OK. Which one? No, I don't see. Vertical. <laughs> 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 the the right. The right. Here? Five points on the right. So the six, but we need six, at least six, no, right? Okay, so there's five points here and six. one point on the right. Okay, okay. I, I don't <laughs> let me do your tone. <laughs> I believe you. But at least I hope that the definition is clear. <laughs> so <laughs> and um, yeah. OK, so the goal is to abstract, to understand what properties of convex sets are essential for this uh, theorem to hold. So is it like a topological property? Is it like what exactly do we need? And the different proofs of this theorem, they use a lot of geometry. So they are very geometric in nature. And the goal is to identify, you know, maybe some topological combinatorial dimension that will uh, abstract it out. And for this, to this, for this end, it's convenient to consider the framework of abstract convexity, which was uh, introduced um, 80 years ago. So what, what is abstract convexity? Sorry, in the previous theorem of the existence, it actually comes with an algorithm. 
Uh, yes, there are also algorithms for uh, for the existence. Yes, yes. So the, the proofs are constructive. Okay, so so we want to extend this to to simplify the proof, and as a result, also to extend this theorem for more general set systems. So what what do we mean by abstract convexity? So a convexity space is a pair X F, where F is a family of subsets that is closed under intersections, under arbitrary intersections. So this is a very natural uh, thing. We see it in many places in mathematics, in topology, closed sets or compact sets, in any reasonable uh, algebraic structure, subgroup, subfields, etc. They are closed under intersections. You know, the Euclidean convex set, this is the motivating uh, example, but we can also think of just grid convex sets. So we only consider the grid points, and we take intersection of convex sets with the grid. So there are plenty of examples for <coughs> this, uh, for convexity spaces. And then we can define, you know, that a convexity space has weak epsilon nets, has the weak epsilon net property if there is a bound that depends only on epsilon, such that for every distribution, there will be n points that hit all sets in the system, all convex sets, we will call them, of measure at least epsilon. Okay? And what we believe, and we also have uh, almost a theorem, that uh, the Rado number, which I will define soon, captures this, uh, this notion. So here is a theorem that probably all of you know by Radon from 21, that if you take any d plus, d plus two points in RD, you can partition them into two sets whose convex hull intersect. So for instance, in the plane, we have two, two cases, either the points are in convex position and then we just take the two diagonals, or one point is in the convex hull of the three others. So the, the partition is red and green, or orange and green. And in general, in RD, you need d plus two. So the rather number of uh, convexity space is the smallest integer r, such that for every r points, we can find the partition of them into two subsets whose convex hull intersects. Now, what do I mean by convex hull? Convex hull is just the intersection of all members of F that contain these r points. Yeah, it's well defined. OK. So the conjecture is that the it, it is the two statements are equivalent, that the convexity space has a finite rather number, and that it has the weak epsilon nets property. That's the conjecture. And we know how to prove two implies one. And the proof is, is a simple reduction to the chromatic number of Knesset graphs. And for those of you who don't know about Knesset graphs, I'll just tell you that it, it's so so what is the chromatic number of the Knesset graph? It was a conjecture by Knesset that was solved by Laszlo Lovas. And it was the first application, I think, of the topological method in uh, combinatorics. So, so this, the reduction is very simple, but <coughs> the proof is somewhat complicated or deep. OK, but one implies two we still don't know. Now, what do we do know? We do Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, this is the. Op I will, I will talk about it soon. But almost, almost, <laughs> almost. But okay. So. Okay. So what do we do know? We do know that if this convexity space is separable, then the conjecture holds. Now, what do I mean by yes? Yeah, so for a separable convexity space, it is equivalent that it will have a finite rather number and that it will have the weak epsilon net property. Now, what does separable means? So for a convexity space, we define a hyperplane is a partition of the space to two convex sets. So whenever we have a partition of x into two sets, both of them are in f, we call this partition a hyperplane. And the, and the convexity space is separable if for every convex set and the point outside the convex set, there is a hyperplane separating them. So that's, it's just an abstraction of the Han Banach uh, uh, property. And then, and so for, abs for separable convective space, we know how to do it. Um, and we get worse bounds than uh, the one of epsilon to the d, but similar. Um, 
Okay, let me just give you an example. So most of the examples I mentioned before are separable convexity space, but let me give you one example of a convexity space which is not separable, which we don't know the answer to. <coughs> so consider a group G with identity E. And now consider the convexity space of all <coughs> subgroups minus the identity. So the identity hits all subgroups. It's not interesting, so we want to remove it. So it's easy to see that this is closed under intersection. Now, what does it mean to have a finite radon number here? It means that any R elements we pick, we can partition them into two subsets, such that the generated groups by these two subsets intersect in a point outside identity. So is it true that for such groups and for any distribution on the group, we can find a small number of points that hits all groups of measure at least epsilon. Yeah, so um, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>